Brothers, sisters, this is somewhat of a rarity for me. I don't usually talk about politics on my channel. Now, those of you who are subscribers and do follow my channel will know that I, I usually talk about spiritual things. I usually talk about different religions, different traditions, different uh, methods by which we can realize ourselves. But today I've decided to change it up just a little bit. This is not going to be a regular thing, but I decided to change it up today because there are some trends in politics that I thought are worth mentioning. Now, I've decided to explain these trends through the game of chess, um, a game that I like very much. It was actually, or it is, uh, based on the, uh, the Persian version of it, and it's almost exactly identical. Um, the pieces look a little different, but besides that, every single move and every single piece does the same thing. Um, this was a game that was used to teach uh, Persian noblemen how to war, how to, how to battle, how to operate and uh, wield your troops in a battle. Uh, the pawns were, of course, the uh, infantry, the front line. The knights would be, of course, the cavalry. Um, the bishops would be some sort of auxiliary. And the castles were, um, if I recall, they were either, they were more stationary uh, forces, very straightforward. I'm not going to get into that. But um, regardless, I've decided to um, name this video uh, Political Strategy and Chess, the True Dichotomy. The 99% versus the 1%. So if this already sounds bad to you, might as well click away. But for those of you who want to stay, I will continue. Now I'm basically going to format this um, in the 99% being us and the 1% being them. So our pawns, their pawns, our knights, their knights, our bishops, their bishops, so forth. So um, I have a few points to make in regards to this, and I will move pieces on the chessboard as I go along. Uh, so, our pawns. We put forward issues where we see lack. For instance, low quality schools, exorbitant prices for medical care, and things of that nature. Their pawns, the 1%'s pawns. They hire lobbyists to tell politicians to say regulations destroy progress and privatization would allow greater flexibility for privately hired teachers and doctors, saving money through less regulation. Seemingly putting our pawn into jeopardy. And we would, of course, take their pawn if we pressed our issues. Now, knights. We have social reform reformers who represent the majority and take donations only from small donors. They're knights. They put forward well-known politicians from oligarchies, easily identifiable, supposedly synonymous with the two main parties. Bush and Clinton, for instance, are two of those oligarchies. So, since I went last, put forward their knights, and our knight will also go forward. Now, bishops, um, our bishop, uh, foreign interests, usually small media coverage and political support, uh, back social reformers. But honestly, uh, when we look at social media, when it comes to people like uh, social reformers like Bernie Sanders or people who are trying to really push for the masses, of course, you can see where my allegiances lie by my, by my understanding of the true dichotomy. Um, but uh, we see that there's a lot of foreign support uh, from people. But when you get to the corporations and media, media organizations, uh, the support seems to be very much based on how much money um, the people supporting different parties in our own country have. Um, foreign interests uh, supporting us, that is, uh, one side or the other. And this kind of hints at the false dichotomy because Democrats and Republicans Foreign interests is very much divided um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to influencing our politics, but when it comes to social reformers, they get very little, but they get a vaster majority of the populace um, in foreign countries. But anyway, uh, going forward, um, bishops, uh, their bishops, their foreign interests usually large and part of foreign oligarchies donate to their knights and create a false dichotomy between the supposedly two parties, as I said. So, go right there. Moving forward. 
were going to castles, our castles. Social reformers try to rally the vast majority to take on hard to assail political positions, like Senate seats in the United States, there are equivalencies in other countries. Um, there are also, you know, electoral college uh, seats, and there are also, you know, house seats. Some, some of them seem fairly stationary a lot of the time, but it's far easier to wedge somebody out of the house than it is, uh, than it is the Senate. Um, uh, support and uh, their castles supporting the false dichotomy to create the illusion of choice for the majority further cementing long-held positions so there is this there is this necessity to keep those positions that are, have been cemented uh, between one party or another the Senate is almost always completely split and that's why either party wants to cement these positions but and this is all in the United States but um, it's all to play into the hands of reinforcing this false dichotomy that they're presenting. Um, so, as they move forward, we can also move forward. Now, we get to the queen. Uh, social reformers try to focus on how to make things better than they are, rather than relying on the idea that they were better in the past, which I'll also get to as far as their queen. And now when I say queen and why I'm associating these things to the queen idea is that there's this fear and love within us. The idea of nostalgia and the idea of being fearful for what may happen in the future if things get worse. Um, these are very much related to the heart, so I decided to associate that with the queen. Um, their queen. They try to keep the status quo and speak about how change will bring further disaster, some claiming we were better in the past, as I said. So um, there is this use of fear, no matter what party you're talking about. This, the true dichotomy is between the 99% and the 1%. Uh, this fear is, is uh, influenced in both people who are Democrats and Republicans from their politicians. Um, you know, I used to be a staunch Democrat, but then as I started to really study and realize the the closeness the democrats are to the republicans nowadays i decided to shift to a very much more progressive platform for my own beliefs and now this may not make most of my subscribers happy or maybe it will make most of them happy and and then some of you will not be happy but um regardless this is just one of my political videos i don't make very many of them um finally we get to the king so they move forward. Let's go ahead and allow them to move forward before we get there. So now we get to the king. Finally, our social reformers try to expose where power is held, um, showing that power is within a few hands and how those hands are often shaking in the behind our backs when in front of us they seem to be yelling at each other and debating on, uh, of course, the public media. But behind closed doors, they are far more similar. Um, I'm not going to go into why I think that. Uh, it would be a much longer video. But uh, going to their king, being exposed in their seats of power are the weakest, uh, wait, are the weakest points in the overall power structure. When fully exposed for their actions, their king is in jeopardy. Their king not being a person necessarily, but a system, the system as a whole. So, they went forward, so we will go forward. Check. So, it always comes down to, it always comes down to trying to show everyone, trying to expose everyone um, in regards to the power that they hold. Uh, now, because of the Electoral College, we have far less of a democracy than we could have. The Electoral College may have served a purpose at the country's founding, but it no longer serves a purpose. And uh, popular vote is simply not the say. Um, it wasn't between Bush and Gore, for instance. Um, but, you know, the sad thing is, a lot of the time the media, in cooperation with Republicans and Democrats, are so well, well tuned to the party platforms that most people kind of fall in line with the Electoral College, even though the Electoral College are people who have far more power. Now, if we are to accept our own sovereignty as individuals, spiritual individuals in this world, we have to have, or at least push for, not violently, but peacefully, a system that allows us to each have an equal say. 
Right now, we simply don't have that. We don't have as much of a democracy as we could have. We don't have to have a complete democracy. But there are very many barriers, as I think that I pointed out, between us and having a fair shake in this world, within our country, in the United States. But this system replicates around the world in many different countries. So it is not just specific to the United States. This is a human issue. And if we all have at least as much say as everyone else, no matter what happens, even if we believe the vast majority of people are wrong, at least it will be fair. At least it will be, you could even say, dharmic. At least we will know that it wasn't because a few people held the power in the right way. It was because most people made a choice. So, the funny thing is, when I was setting up this game, I actually didn't mean to put the not the 1% in a position to where I would check the king. It's interesting that it, that actually occurred. A um, little bit of uh, subconscious activity, I imagine. But uh, hey, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been interesting. If you liked it at all, hit that thumbs up down there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, maybe you never want to see a video like this from me again. Maybe you uh, want to see more videos like this. Feel free to shoot down in the comment section below. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, I'll go ahead and put the link in the comment section below. But um, thank you very much, brothers and sisters. This is not a type of video I make very often, but I think that we all deserve to have an equal say in this world, in our individual countries. And we must also look to our our uh, the other countries in the world, besides our own, wherever we live, and view them as uh, neighbors, as not people we must buy against, but people we must work with, because we are on this one planet. Uh, this doesn't have to be, a, you know, this doesn't have to be uh, <laughs> Lord, of, Lord of the Flies. It doesn't have to be all these children uh, squabbling on this isolated island. The children, us, we can work together. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to end up uh, like a battleground. It can end up like a, a coalition um, of universal peace and love. Now, that might sound very uh, hopeful, but I like to consider myself... Uh, an optimist in the long term. Thank you very much. I hope all of you have a great day.